hi welcome back to my channel if you're new here then welcome and um, thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe um, so this video is part three of my series Montessori for one to two year olds so it's covering younger toddlers and um, this one is all about the environment so I'm going to be talking about kind of internal space external space everything to consider if you want to set up a Montessori environment so not just the play space although I will talk about that um, it's everything else to enable independence bring nature into your child's every day all those kind of things that are important to Montessori uh, so keep watching and uh, I'll give you a tour so this is our nature kitchen over here this is where we do kind of water play it's really filthy at the moment because we've just been using it today. Um, water play and we've got our mud in here, so kind of muddy creations. I have a video on this as well, so if you want to see the ins and outs of it, then um, just check out my video, a mud kitchen or nature kitchen updated, and it will give you kind of the full details. But yeah, this is where they come to kind of get messy and get creative and, and kind of, yeah, just kind of bring nature into their play. Um, they've got a little table here that they can sit at as well and sometimes we have our lunch out here or we'll have snacks out here. So a sandpit's um, quite a good idea. This one is uh, on legs so it's really good height for toddlers who are now standing and walking and you can get them in the ground as well or ones on the floor which are perfectly fine because children love to get inside them so you know even better to be honest. Um, but yeah, this kind of play is so popular for young toddlers. Um, even now, my children are getting kind of closer to three now, and they always play with the sandpit. It's the most played with thing in the garden, so I would definitely recommend something like this. So climbing frames are a good idea if you have the space, because uh, children between one and two are really into movement, It'll be all about climbing and running and jumping and kind of using their newfound freedom now that they've learned to kind of run and they've got all this access to space and all this kind of thing that they never had before and um, so yeah we we got this toddler climbing frame uh, which is a perfect size for young toddlers they've been using it since they're about one and um, it's got some steps here on the back so they can climb up and then as they get older they can kind of use this rope area for climbing or this side um, and then you've got the slide as well but yeah there's lots of things like this I'll link this this particular one below for you if you have the space obviously not everyone's got a garden um, and there's lots of things that you can get within the house uh, to kind of enhance their ability with climbing and things like the pickler and um, so that's another option for kind of indoors and it tidies away as well um, but yeah if you wanted if you've got a bit of an outdoor space then I think a climbing frame is always a great idea. So over here we've got our kind of uh, planting area for growing uh, fruits and vegetables. Um, I think a child from one is going to love to get dirty and they have got the kind of strength in their hand to hold a small spade. So this is the kind of thing that they can get stuck into. Um, I wouldn't expect anything to advance but yeah just to kind of help you dig and just kind of get involved in what you're doing it's lov lovely to bring children into um, the activities that we're doing like this so they can learn from it and also play their own little part in it as well um, now that the children are getting older they're getting closer to kind of three they can help me plant seeds and they can help kind of with um, harvesting and that kind of stuff and they really want to as well they actively get involved but from a younger age from between one and two they can really get, get stuck in and get muddy and, and help you water the plants as well. It's all, all about care of the environment. So that's something that they can really get stuck into. Because you can find child size um, watering cans and you can just kind of prompt them to help you every evening to kind of water the things that you're growing and take care of them. Um, and children, yeah, really love to do that. So we've got little areas in our garden like this where I'm trying to bring more kind of wildlife into the space. We've got a couple of little frogs living in our pond, which is super exciting. Um, so yeah, it's another way for kind of bringing nature into your child's every day and more opportunities for them to explore the outdoors. So we'll come out here and they'll 
look for the frog and we'll kind of watch him if we get a chance because he's kind of shy um, and then we can talk about it. it gives us an opportunity to learn more language around the frog and what he eats and what he does and his kind of characteristics and all that kind of stuff um, yeah it's super exciting to have have this kind of cute little pond in our space and then over here I've put some logs um, which we use for kind of exploring little mini beasts really. We've got lots of little bugs that live under here. We've got snails and slugs and wood lice and spiders um, and ants and centipedes and all sorts of things. So yeah, we'll kind of lift these up um, after we've left them maybe for a week and then see kind of what's living under there. And the children absolutely love it. They're really into worms, they're into snails, they're into everything. So if you can set up a kind of space like this where you can explore little uh, bugs and mini bees, then that's really, really cool too. Another way to do it is to buy one of those kind of bug hotels. Um, you can buy those and, and fit them in most kind of small gardens. And that's another way to kind of explore bugs and, and see what they're up to. So the indoor space is all about kind of um, ease of access when it comes to one and two year olds because they're able to start walking and moving around and they're able to they're able to grasp things really easy in their hand they want to touch everything they want to feel everything they just want to be everywhere so a kind of low shelf like this um, is perfect for them I've got another one over here um, a low bookshelf is such a good idea so they can have access to reading materials or if you haven't got space for a bookshelf then just a little basket like this fits anywhere and it's perfect for them to just dig into and kind of have a look through. From the age of one as well I really like to have kind of low table and a chair that they can sit at um, so they can have their lunch there, they can have snacks, they can do their art there as well. So not everything kind of has to be on the floor and they don't have to climb up to a really high table. If you can fit something in, even half the size of this, you know, if you've got one child, then, then perfect. Um, yeah, just somewhere that they can sit is absolutely perfect. And it means they can be more independent if it's a child size and they can pull their chair out, sit down and it's, yeah, kind of builds on that autonomy so when Mia was a lot younger we had this dining table kind of in the middle here and I didn't have this sideboard here so we used to kind of walk around it to get into the playroom so when she became more mobile um, I decided to move it to one side and create more of a kind of open space so she could move freely through the middle nothing kind of in her way really um, just lots of open space to kind of move around so that's what we've done here I think it's good to give them um, access to kind of an open area that they can move around in um, and not have things kind of in the way. When she was younger, we used to have gates in areas that we didn't want her to access without us. So this is our kitchen. We had a gate across here and we also have a gate just here towards the hallway. We still have this here. Um, so that means she can't climb up the stairs without us. Um, so she's just in a space which is safe for her and kind of there's no, well we limit the opportunity for her to be unsafe basically. Um, so you might hear this referred to as a yes space, um, which means that they, there's nowhere here that can't be accessed by the child, they're free to move around the home kind of without being stopped and restricted. Um, it just helps them to feel more comfortable, more secure and less frustrated, you know, being stopped all the time. Can't go there, you can't go there. 
Um, if there's a gate there, there's just no way that they can access it, so it's a lot easier for them to understand. This is our downstairs loo. Um, when she kind of turned one, we started getting steps everywhere, so she had she was able to access areas independently. So she can come up here and uh, wash her hands after using the toilet, or you know, if we've been out and we want to come in and wash our hands after being out all day, um, then she can do that independently. Um, and yeah, it's just so great to allow them to be independent and not have to have you to kind of assist them all the time. Obviously, if they're a younger toddler, if they're one, they're not going to be able to wash their hands completely on their own. You might need to give them a hand with um, kind of the soap or if you've got um, a dispenser, they might need a hand with that and you might need to instruct them or show them how to do it properly and where the towel is and everything. Obviously, there's a lot of steps involved with washing hands and it's not until they get older that they kind of understand how it goes. Um, so yeah, just having steps everywhere, giving them access to everything really low um, is such a great idea. So this is another thing that I created not that long ago. So she could have an area where all of her things are kept, like plates and cups and cutlery and everything like that. So this is her kind of little kitchen area. In here we keep um, knives and forks and spoons and here she's got some of her knives for cutting and then we've got plates and we've got cups usually in there um, as well and then anything else like things for juicing or chopping um, are in there too so she can access them really easily she knows where they are as well for putting away so if we're doing the drying washing up and she wants to put them away she can easily get down there and put them away um, nothing's going to fall out, so it's perfectly safe. I don't know if you, you're you the same, but in my cupboards, everything's kind of jam-packed. <laughs> and um, I try and live like a minimalist life, but it doesn't really work. I have too much stuff. Uh, I just need to be brutal and kind of clear out. But yeah, like my cupboard, everything's full in here. So if a toddler went in there, it would just all fall on top of them. So it's good to have an area there where it's completely safe and just, yeah, easy to access. Um, then I keep a jug on here for breakfast and the bowl um, I usually put away and she'll get out and put it there and have her breakfast as well. Um, this is our water dispenser. I don't actually use this anymore um, because it's so big we were wasting a lot of water and that really bothered me. So it is there but it's going to be moved and we actually use um, jugs for drinks in the day so they can pour their own drinks with a jug. If not I have a really small step here which I put near the sink over here, and they can get their own drinks from the tap. Obviously a younger toddler wouldn't be able to do that. Um, they might need a small jug kind of for pouring that you can refill throughout the day um, in an area where they can access it, like here or in the living room. And then on the side, here I keep cloths for wiping up spills. So everything's all in one area. If you don't have space for this kind of thing, then you can clear out kind of one of your cupboards. Um, you can find maybe a hook on the side to put the cloth where they can access it. Um, it's really so many ways kind of for making it work in your space because everyone's different and what you have access to and your homes are completely different. So you've just got to do what kind of works for you really. So another thing I would recommend is moving anything that you don't want your toddler to touch or access. Um, the reason for that is if you keep diverting them or trying to take it away from them, it's going to cause quite a bit of frustration. Um, it's just easier to kind of move it so that they just can't see it or they can't touch it. And then things don't get broken and they don't get annoyed when you keep redirecting them all the time. Uh, so like with this coffee table here, um, I have things under here like that's a pack of cards, we've got a few books under there, magazines. I'm quite happy for them to pull them out and have a look at them um, and then we can tidy them away together. There's nothing that's going to get broken. Obviously it's kind of annoying when there's stuff everywhere and they pull it all out and but it's just part of being a toddler. They want to explore everything that they can get their hands on and that's totally fine as long as it's nothing that's breakable or, or kind of that can hurt them. I'm kind of like got over being so anal about <laughs> the tidiness. <laughs> It's totally fine if they want to mess up my coffee table um, because we can tidy it away, so it's totally not a problem. Um, so like these little monkeys we have here, 
<laughs> oh sorry chimpanzees um this was something i considered moving but then i thought you know they actually have quite a lot of fun with them it's one of the things that they always play with um if they're in the the area of the living room they'll come in and they'll play with these and they haven't been broken yet so it's totally fine i've kind of let them do that um i still have a lot of plants around in plant pots i'm a bit of a plant crazy person um, and at first when they were younger toddlers they used to play with this a lot, they used to pull the leaves, they used to dig their hands in there, they used to pick them up and move them because children love transporting things from place to place and I used to get a bit of a heart attack thinking that they were going to drop them and, and kind of smash them. So, But there are certain things I think that that you can kind of use as a learning opportunity so I would just can leave them out because I wanted them out and they're, they're a beautiful addition to any space having plants and I would just continually kind of um, remind them of the boundary that we these can't be touched these stay here you know please put that back all that kind of thing um, we can't touch this or blah 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 however I would word it or however you would word it. So I think it's fine to keep a few things out that you don't want them to touch, but use it as a kind of learning opportunity to build that boundary and remind them that this can't be played with and you can't eat that and that kind of thing. <laughs> so I've got more plants over here. And it does work to be honest, because um, after a while, they just lost interest in them and they became just part of the furniture. They don't even really touch them now. They just use them, um, they water them sometimes. Uh, and that's kind of a nice thing because it's care of the environment and they like taking care of them. If they start to look a bit limp, they'll tell me, they'll say, oh, that plant doesn't look very happy. And then we'll give it a water. But yeah, um, it does work. If you can be patient and reinforce boundaries <laughs> after a while, I promise you it will work. And they'll understand that this doesn't, we don't touch this. Um, or they'll just lose interest and they're like, oh, I'm not really bothered about that anymore. So yeah. So the entrance area is quite important as well. So this is our really tiny, annoying hallway. <laughs> we come in here. We actually come around the back most of the time now. But yeah, this is our front door. Um, and from a young age, they can start to put their own shoes on or learn where to put the shoes when they've taken them off. Um, and where to kind of hang their coat and where to go to to go and get their coat so that they're ready to go out. So I've got a couple of hooks here which are low down and easy for children to access and we hang our jackets and our coats here. And then over here I've just got a little basket next to our stairs. They use this to sit and put the shoes on and then all the children's shoes will be kept in here. I say children because I am a childminder which is why I've got more than one hook over there. Um, so yeah, this is where the children keep their shoes and this is where we sit when we want to go out. Um, so yeah, your hallway and entrance area will be very different. You might want a low shelf that they can put the shoes on. You might want a basket like this. You might want to put a little step that they can sit on or a little chair. Um, whatever really, as long as it's, it allows them to become more independent with self-care and getting ready then that's a really good idea to teach them from a young age that this is where the shoes go and this is where you can go to get your shoes children like order as well they like to know where things are and where things go and and routine and all that kind of stuff so having areas specific for you know hanging your coat up for example or putting your shoes away is really good for young toddlers this is my kitchen uh, we do a lot of cooking together in here so when she was kind of standing on her own um i got a a little helper which is kind of this high and it's basically an open box that you can put your child in at the counter so they can help you do preparing of food it was actually really big and really chunky so i got rid of it because just moving it around was quite a task so I ended up getting a stool. This is the step. I've actually got it in the bathroom right now, but I usually have it in the kitchen. Um, it's just an Ikea step. I can't remember what it's called. I'll, I'll link it below for you. But I liked it because it means she can climb up on her own, which the little helper didn't have. I had to lift her into it 
and as she got older and heavier that was quite difficult <laughs> so she can climb up on her own um, and it's quite stable from a younger age you might find these with a kind of frame around them for safety because they can slip off if they're not watching their footing so this is much better for kind of up to two year old i would say but a younger child you could go for one with a frame or a learning tower which are really similar and you can get them where they can climb in and out i'll link a couple below which i found which are really good but yeah just having this kind of thing in the kitchen is so good because they can get up to the worktop and cook with you or even if they don't want to cook or prepare food they can watch you see what you're doing you can talk about what you're doing it's more kind of opportunity to connect and learn language talk about food and all the different references chopping cutting boiling all that kind of stuff so i wanted to talk about dining or eating together eating at the table when children are younger they obviously have a high chair generally um but when she was getting older and more mobile and she was able to climb i wanted to introduce something that allowed her to be a bit more independent and didn't restrict her like a high chair also with a high chair you have to lift them in and out so it can be kind of a bit frustrating if you're in the middle of something and they want to get out because they don't have a lot of patience they kind of want you to get them out right then and there um, and I didn't like that so I ended up getting this toddler chair which is very similar to like a trip trap but it's like a cheaper version I actually got this from Facebook um, and it came as a twin I've got another one as well which is great because I'm a childminder so I kind of need more than one of everything um, but this is great because it you can move the level down so that they can climb up even if they're a bit shorter and then as they get older and they want to get closer to the um, table you can move them up and down but the big bottom step is bigger so that they can rest their feet on it um, and they can climb up on it as well the only thing that I need to do really is to help kind of push them in and that's it but I usually leave it like this so that she can climb in and out without me so she's close to the table so she can eat but also it allows her to get down on her own as well so this kind of thing i think is great as your child is getting older because it gives them more independence and that's really what it's all about i'll um this particular one isn't available now but i'll link one below which is really really similar so that's it thank you so much for watching hopefully that was helpful for you so that's the final one in my series of one to two year olds i had a lot of people um, subscribers and people on Instagram and um, other mums who had children of that kind of age so they were interested in in those aspects of Montessori so hopefully I've covered that for you and that's been helpful um, do comment and let me know and yeah thanks for you thank you so much for watching again um, I'll be posting my next video in hopefully less than a week um, so don't forget to tune into that